What is the most exciting thing that you've done with VR? Oh, that's a, uh, that's a great question. So, um, look, a lot of VR today, and, and you know, look, we, we have Oculus outside. I would urge anyone who hasn't tried it to, to give, it a, give it a go. Um, a lot of what, what's happening today in VR is around gaming, right? And, and it's, it's very natural for that because of the type of computing required, you know, the type of experiences, the type of tools. These are all just derivatives and offshoots of the video game um, industry. But, but for me, um, and, you know, what I really love about VR, I'm not a gamer. Um, you know, VR is very much, it's the ultimate empathy machine, right? And, and what, what that means is you, you feel present, right? When you put on a headset, um, it feels like, I mean, you're looking at somebody right in the eye, and that eye contact, right, which is what we humans sort of gravitate towards and define presence with, it's, it's almost jarring the first time you, you feel it. When you, when you put on, you're, you're completely moved and floored with how connected you feel with the person you're looking at in, in front of you. Um, and so for me, you know, as we think about storytelling, as we think about building empathy, um, as we think about building bridges across the world, um, people connecting with people is like the fundamental thing that I think breaks down barriers. And so we've done pieces like um, uh, Clouds Over Sidra, which um, we showed at Davos that traced Syrian refugees, um, you know, and the plight that they went through. Um, we just did uh, really something at Tribeca last year called um, Step Up to the Line, which um, explores what happens to prisoners in the California penal system, not just as they come in, but as they leave and they try to reintegrate into society. And if you think it's hard coming in, you know, try being in, in prison for 20 years and they're trying to reintegrate in. So, you know, when people put that on, they just have a different view of, um, hey, this isn't just some random prisoner, but like I've connected with somebody, I felt it. And, you know, we can't connect with everybody in the world. We just don't have the time or the cycles to go do that. But being able to put on a headset and feel that empathy, uh, that's incredibly powerful. Um, I'm going to send this last question your way with a little bit of a friendly caution, uh, because uh, you know I, I would expect you to use a little bit of diplomatic discretion in answering it, if you will. Um, do you think the television, the way we know it today, is going to be dead very soon? Again, I think it depends on what you mean by television. Uh, okay, the television is the way we, you know, it's a little bit of appointment viewing on a small screen um, at appointed times um, with more like a push content kind of an environment um, is how we view television today, right? So, look, the, the need and the human appetite for great content, great produced content, doesn't go away. Right, suddenly, it's not like suddenly we're going to become people who don't love stories, who don't want to understand things. Um, the need for highly curated, highly produced, authentic news and conversation, that doesn't go away. Right? Now, how does it get delivered? Sure, like that's been changing for decades anyway, right? Is it coming over the air? Is it coming through a cable? Is it coming you know, via the internet? Like, you know, those are, and I'm not trivializing those, but like those are all things that will change. But the human need for content, uh, for content, and for curated content, like that doesn't change, um, you know, in any way. Um, how do we consume it? Um, I still think for the longest time, TVs are still really, really important. Um, you know, if you look at data, Netflix just released it this week, which no matter how people sign up, they may sign up on a tablet, they may sign up on a, a smartphone. Um, within three months, 70% of the people are watching content on a TV, right? There's just something communal as I sit around um, with family or with friends that I want to watch together. There's also something about just seeing it on a big screen. I mean, why, why do we all go to the movies, right? It's, it's to escape, it's to be immersed, it's you know, to have that content. So uh, you know, I, don't, I don't think that that changes fundamentally.